Alright guys, I got an interesting video for you today. It's going to be controversial, so I just want everybody to voice their opinion in the comments below. And this is just my opinion. been food plotting for about 15 years um, hard about 15 years and what I've seen is we got to stop using the cheap blends of seeds for your food plot if your food plot blend has more than two maybe three seeds in it it's a waste of time let me, let, before you start writing in the comments, let me tell you why. This is what I look at. This is how I look at how a food plot is. So, say for instance, we got a food plot right here. This is the green food plot. This is before you put your seeds in it. To me, a food plot has stored energy like a battery. So. Say for instance, this is a battery that supplies your food plot with energy. Energy for your seeds to grow. So, say for instance, this battery has uh, 12 volts in it. With the 12 volt battery, you can grow one type of seed, no matter what it is. You can grow it up to, you know, to to its potential. But if you put another kind of seed in it, and you you got another kind of seed you're gonna put in it, this battery voltage goes down every time you put a different seed in your food plot. So if you got three different seeds in your food plot this battery can only hold so much energy for those three seeds so if you got one seed you got one seed all that energy from that battery that supplies the energy for your food plot goes into that one seed can you can you follow what I'm saying so three seeds it's like you got three cars connected to this one battery so for me if i'm going to do a blend i'm going to do individual seeds because the first thing is on most cheaper seed blends you might have uh most of it might be oats then you might have some winter peas mixed in there. Then you might have uh, some kind of brassica mixed in there. And what they sold you was that the oats are going to come up first while the actual winter peas and the brassicas come up later. But in reality, if you got a seed, say for instance, the, the brassica... Say if it's the brassica going to come up, and it's going to it's going to flower, and you got the actual oats come up below that. So these these brassicas going to come up, and they're going to shade out those oats. So you might think those oats are coming up, 
But once those brassicas catch up with those oats, those oats are, are, are going to die out up under that brassica. So it's it's really no need to uh, actually put oats and brassicas together because you're using all the energy you got in this in this battery that feeds your food plot. It's going to go to those brassicas once it gets over top of those oats. So now you got two C's on it. Now the battery voltage has dropped down to 11 volts. And as that that brassica gets bigger and bigger, it's going to take more and more energy to run that brassica. So by the time that brassica is, is halfway matured, probably a month into when you had it, when you planted it, those oats don't have any energy to grow. So you basically wasted the, I'm just saying, 10 volts to run that vat brassica and that um, oats seed to get it to, you know, two, three inches, if that. And plus with the blends, if you ever look at the the back of a blend, it's going to have the seeds. Then at the bottom, it's going to say other seeds, probably 10%. That 10% is weeds. It's weed seeds. So why would you put intentionally plant weed seeds in your food plot just for you can have to come back and fight it and spray it and and do whatever you need to do to try to get that weed out of your food plot when you put it in there to begin with and you fertilized it and you limed it so it's going to be very difficult to get that weed out of your food plot that you actually planted in there to begin with so me myself like I said it's just my opinion just my opinion Just my opinion. I'm going to plant one seed, well, two seeds at the most. I'm going to put, trying to get this dry because it doesn't look like it's dry. I'm going to put, this year I'm actually using beets and greens, which they're in the same family. So when I put my beets and greens in, I want my beets and greens to grow knee high, at least knee high. That means I got a good stand, I got a lot of tonnage of, of food for my food plot. So I'm going to put beets and greens in my food plot. And it's got the bottom of it is going to have a turnip or or some kind of beet pod at the bottom so I'm going to have a I'm going to use all this voltage in this this 12 volt battery that feeds my food plot with energy for my seeds to grow I'm going to use all of it just for those seeds I'm not going to put oats in there I'm not going to put any kind of rye grass or anything like that because I've had people ask me over the years well why don't you just use rye grass or or some kind of oats or just any kind of grassy type uh, seed first of all I'm looking for the tonnage I'm, I only have an acre of land a food plot it may be an acre and if I waste the energy in that food plot to run some oats and and rye grass and all that kind of stuff that that's not going to feed my deer to the full tonnage that I need to feed. I got a high density of deer on my food plot. It's no ag land. It's no uh, farms. It's none of that. Uh, you know, in in 30 miles of where I hunt at. So those deer, the only thing they eat is my food plot and whatever's in the woods, like uh, you know acorns 
uh, browsing on, on all the vegetation, that type thing. So my food plot is very valuable to my, my way of hunting. I might not hunt on my food plot, you know, physically sit on it very much, but deers from whatever around in, inside my wooded area within the mile is going to be traveling trying to get to my food plot because especially when it grows to its potential. Uh, for some reason, my food plot grows pretty decent every other year. Last year it didn't grow that well. Hopefully this year, if I can get it in the ground in, in uh, a good enough time, that it will grow back to where it was. The first time it grew, I mean, I had beets and greens again. They was knee high. Just out of the blue, it grew to, you know, to its potential. And my food plot, the pH has always been from from like a 7.6 to a 7. I try to keep it within that range. Uh, that's why I get a, a soil test every year to see if I'm in that range. And another thing that might help you out. Uh, I got a video that's coming out or it may not came out depending on when this video comes out but the actual product called Plot Starter and Plot Boost from Deer Grow. I might not use the Plot Starter because I don't think it's the right product for me but the, the actual Plot Boost I sprayed it on my food plot, not last year, but the year before, and my food plot grew knee high. I, I, I shot a deer in my food plot, and when he fell down, I couldn't find it. That's how thick and tall my food plot was. But I'm trying to figure out why it only does it every other year. But back to this, to the energy I mean, you got to look at it like that because every time, say for instance, you got a bag of bag of lime and a bag of fertilizer. Every time you put fertilizer and lime back on this food plot, the voltage on your battery that feeds your food plot goes up. So that's why, that's how you can try to keep your voltage at 12 percent on your battery that feeds your food plot so if you say for instance if you didn't put the lime and the fertilizer on on your food plot your voltage is going to go straight down it might not go down much if you got one seed or two seeds on your food plot in the same family you got to remember you could, they're going to grow better in the same family because they're going to grow almost at the same height and the same rate. If you're going to use oats and rye grass, to me, I think you just need to use oats and rye grass. Don't put no brassicas, no leafy type uh, uh, seed in there, no legumes, nothing like that. You want to stay with the same type family because they grow at the same kind of rate and they won't shade each other out because they're growing at the same time so that's just my train of thought on how I approach food plots and like my new food plot which I, this is the third year for this food plot <coughs> excuse me and I just got the soil test back for that but you I got a I'm gonna have a soil test video you can see what I've done in that food plot to get it to this level so my battery would be 12 volts to feed that food plot cause if your food plot is only like a 5.4 your battery in your food plot might be 10 volts 
which is not going to give you much energy to supply a food plot. That's why your food plot only grows yay tall. So if you got a problem with your food plot only growing, you know, three, four inches when you're putting all this, the, 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 make, the kind of mix that you're using on it, just go get one type of seed or two types of seed in the same family and just use that and see. I mean, every almost every year, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do something different to see what grows better in my food plot. Uh, like I said, last year I put winter greens in there. They were just straight winter greens. And I do sometimes put clover in there, but I don't expect the clover to actually grow in my fall food plot. I'm using that to grow in the spring. When I plant that that uh, clover, it's going to come up in the spring. It's not going to come up in the fall. I mean, you might see a couple of, you know, it might come up that much, but I'm not using it for, for the fall. I'm using it for the spring, but I'm just planting it in the fall. That might be something that, uh, that you might think about doing. Uh, but in that reason, like I said, what with clover, clover is a good add-on with any kind of food plot because clover produces its own nitrogen it doesn't take nitrogen like all these other plants and seeds would do uh, like rye grass and oats and uh, rye grain any kind of grassy type uh, seed it's going to take nitrogen out the ground I mean, even the, the, the turnips and the sweet beets and all that's taking nitrogen out the ground, but the clover is actually putting uh, nitrogen back in the ground. So that's the reason I say that we need to stop using the, the mix of seeds that you get for, you know, right now it might be higher, but years ago it was $28. I could get a 50 pound bag of seeds and it had winter peas and oats and and all these kind of seeds in it and you're like yeah I'm gonna boy this is gonna grow real good it might cover the ground but it's only gonna grow two three four inches max and if you ever had a seed blend to reach more than four or five inches please let me know because I have never had a seed blend to get taller than three or four inches and I and I never really thought about it. I'm like, I'm putting all this fertilizer and all this lime on these these food plots, and it's just not growing. What what am I doing wrong? And that is that's what I've come up with. I put too much too many seeds on the ground that my food plot can handle. My food plot can't handle three, four, five different type of seeds and actually grow to its potential so that's why I'm staying with one type of seed to use all my energy in my food plot to run that one type of seed up to whatever the potential of that seed so that's just my opinion guys um, I just wanted to bring that out maybe you never really looked at it this way but that's just the way I look at it so if you think I'm wrong on this please let me know below and uh, other than that, we're going to get this season going pretty good because, like I said, I still got these two food plots that I have to do. And it's been raining real heavily here in Georgia, it's, you know, off and on, off and on. So I wish I would have got these seeds in the ground by like August 1st. Now it's like August 28th and I still don't have seeds in the ground. And I don't know when I can get seeds in the ground. Uh, normally we run, we put seeds in the ground sec second week of September. That's probably when I'm going to get time to get down and actually put seeds in the ground. Probably middle of September, which is the average time for us here in Georgia, middle Georgia anyway. Uh, but with all the rain we've been having, 
I wish I would have got these in a month ahead of time. But with problems with equipment and scheduling, it just didn't happen. So, guys, I'm going to end it right there. But please let me know what you think about this battery scenario feeding your food plot. And to all the people that, that uses those blends, um, please, just, just try it one year. Just go to your local feed store and tell them, you know, I want this seed and that seed. Get, get two seeds. Try two seeds in the same family and, and put them in your food plot and see how it grows. Alright guys, but if one thing, if you had subscribed to the channel, please help us out. Subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure you put your comment below. Hit the like button, that always helps. But other than that guys, until the next video, I'm out. Thanks for watching.